All right, we are recording. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Carolyn Ritter Watson, and I am the founder and overseer of the Tears Movement. And that includes retreats, conferences, and workshops. And so God is doing some amazing things through this movement, right? And so um, one of the things we do is we have virtual retreats as well and virtual conferences. And so I want to talk today about a, our virtual retreat that we had last month. I think it was last month. And I just would like to invite those of you who are watching this video to join us for our upcoming virtual retreat. So it's coming up. So I'll give you more information about that later. But it's called our Stay in the Frame Retreat. And so we have Linda Sanders here, and she's going to give you her take on her experience because she did join us last month for the retreat. So hi, Linda. How are you? Good evening, Carolyn. How are you doing, dear? I'm, I'm well. Thank good. You. I'm good. So can you just tell us how the retreat blessed you last month when you attended? Um, it was a very good experience for me. It was right on time. Um, I felt as though that in my life at that period, there was a lot of loose ends mm, okay. that could be um, connected. And being a part of the retreat helped me make a lot of connections oh, in God. the spirit realm. Mm, okay. Yes. Um, mm. It gave me an elevation in the spirit. It gave me spiritual confidence. Um, just being, I'm a type of person, though, I go through different um, periods of different moods. Okay. Sometimes quiet sometimes i'm an introvert and sometimes i'm not okay so i'm one way all the time so being that i have an anointing and a calling on my life yes you um, do <laughs> i don't always feel sure okay people can see more of about me on the outlet than i actually see okay on myself and you know, the built of confidence a lot of time, you know, God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. Mm. That comes from the enemy. And a lot of times we are fearful to step out. Sometimes we're confused. Mm. Yes. You know, we know we're supposed to be doing something, but we may not know what. Mm. And, you know, I think being a part of the retreat, it kind of snuck up on me personally. Okay. Because I found myself interacting in ways that I had no plan on doing. Mm. Okay. Whatever God places in you generally is going to come out. That's right. Some kind. So the retreat basically grew, also groomed me. Mm. It actually gave me also insight on some things that I kind of knew, but it put a label on it. Right, right. Mm. Amen. That's so good. That's so good because that's, that's the thing point. About being in the frame. Yes, being in the frame, in basically. The frame. Yes. I kind of was already born, but I didn't put it in the way you did. Right. You know, it's always good to see a different way on mm -hmm. how to do something. Okay. And, you know, being connected with the other women, listening mm -hmm. to the women, encouraging a woman's ministry. I don't know necessarily how. But I already do it. Amen. You know, from different age, you know, different ages. So it, it it really helped me equip me to doing something that I basically was already doing. Right. But it basically helped me put me in line. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. So I'm well, I'm so blessed to hear that because when God gave me the vision for these retreats, that's, the, that's basically the outcome. You know, he told me, listen, when you have these retreats, you're going to have all different types of women. And some people may already know their purpose, but not quite sure of how to carry it out. Some people may mm -hmm. not even really have a clue as to what their purpose is, but basically, but Everybody, he showed me, he said that everyone who attends will, will begin to break through barriers, you know, and blocks because many times, you know, the enemy will, he likes to block. <laughs> he likes to block yeah. us 
and keep uh -huh. us. He doesn't want us to fulfill our purpose. So he likes to keep us distracted and send those blocks. And so um, I'm just excited that you joined and that you joined us and went through that journey with us. And you know, you blessed me. <laughs> like that really? was, we all kind of blessed each other, I felt. <laughs> okay, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So it, it, it's just, I was so elated of how everybody just shared and, um, and that's what it's all about. It's about, because that's the other thing that God showed me. He says, I want you to create sisterhood. <laughs> like we're, it's, a, it's about a sisterhood because so many times we get the rap that, you know, women can't get along. You know, we, we're competitive and, and sometimes that's true, but God is raising up a new generation of women. Like he, that we have yeah. to stop, stop all that. There's no time for that. Yeah. because There's so yeah. much work that needs yeah. to be done. Yes. Yes. So we have to come together and support each other and stand in the gap for each other. And I was just so blessed by you and all the ladies just hearing everybody's story and just, and, and actually watching certain things unfold. I, I was, I was just like, wow, daddy, you know, you, you just do what you do. <laughs> God is just so good. So I was just so excited and I'm so glad that you were able to, um, even come on today and share your experience because I want other women to know that there's so much more that God has out there for us. There's so much work. There's so much purpose in us. You know, and the other thing that he kind of laid on my heart, which I'm going to talk about that with the ladies about as well is to do a, um, a Esther challenge because, you know, we all have a call on our life. We all have a call. We all have a purpose and it's for such a time as this so all the things that we've gone through like esther all the things that we've gone through have brought us for such a time as this and it's and i'm so looking forward to the new year <laughs> you know all the things that god is showing me so much stuff so i'm just so excited but you know what 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 takeaway would you give um you know, for somebody who may be watching this video and they may be thinking, stay in a friend retreat, that sounds weird to me, that sounds strange. What takeaway would you give? Like what what um last words would you like to words of encouragement would you like to give somebody to um inspire them to show up? Because we got to show up for ourselves. We know many times we were talking earlier how, you know, um, many times people say, I'm waiting on God, I'm waiting on God. And God is like waiting on us because many times he already gives us opportunities for breakthrough, but we don't always take the opportunities. And I look at the, this retreat as one opportunity to kind of open our eyes as to some of the things that God has already shown us, like you were saying. There's just so much for us to do. So what, what, what is your takeaway or what inspired, what, I don't know, last words of inspiration would you like to give to someone who might be thinking about, you know, attending, but not, not quite sure why they should attend. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Carol, I would say, first of all, to be open. Mm, yes, 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 yes. To be open and to be hungry. Mm. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, and I say that mainly because it's just like you said, we all have something to give. God didn't place gifts in us and talents for us to sit on mm -hmm. and let them waste away. So true. And sometimes it's always, I say open because we all can, each day we should, we should learn something. That's true. And not only that, we're here for each other. Mm, that's right. So even if somebody is not sure of whether they need, need it, they may be led. You may be led. And I'll speak to, speak to the person. You may be led to help somebody because mm. God already knows. He's already put it together. If you have a desire, and you should have a desire to always learn, if you have that desire, maybe you are what God is pulling you in 
to help somebody else. Because see, no one person can do ministry by themselves. That's right. That's right. And this that's girl right. says she got something from us. She basically is the facilitator. She's the leader. She's the head. But she can't do this alone. That's right. So if you have a taste of mm. wanting to be a part, then God is umshing you to be a part, to give, and to receive. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. What I really got out of it, and I can say that from experience, I did not expect to be giving as much as I did because I found out that I was giving a lot. You were. And that was planned. <laughs> Yes. But it was because I was spirit led. That's right. And it was all, it was in you. So what was in you was coming out in a great way. I was like, all right, I'm a, she's encouraging me right now. <laughs> and I wasn't the only one. Like we, I, I loved it. Like I love that because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. us just mm -hmm. Because we are, that's the, the one thing God keeps showing me is I am my sister's keeper. Like we have to be our sister's keeper. We need each other. We need each other. We absolutely we need, need each other. other. So much. There are so many women that are hurting. Mm, and yes. then there are so many women that are dealing with certain things and they think they're alone. That they're the only one going through this or going through that. And there's so many people that may be going through the same thing, but if you never share and if we're always embarrassed and if we're always right. ridiculing each other, mm -hmm. then nobody's going to grow. That's we true. all can grow. Just That's how right. amazing. And I mean, you know, the word even says about cry, call the, the uh, what is it, the warring woman, the, the weeping women. Yes. There's a specialty in us getting to the altar mm, yes. for prayer. Men are powerful and they're strong, but when it comes to women, there is something special that God put Draw in us and down. knows it. That's yeah. why he allows us to go through and it causes us to fight among each other. Mm, because right. he knows women together, mm. Mm, mm, we can do, we can cook. We can cook. We yes. can do some other type of cooking too. That's right. That's right. Not just cooking food. Not we can cook some spiritual food. If we that's get together so and so cry true. out to the Lord, yeah. come on. So we I get like, together. I, I like the way you said because this is the thing that God has been showing me that, and I've been talking about this a lot, and even in workshops and things. We have to take the mask off. So many of, yes. so many women are walking around with this mask on, with this facade. Yes. We're living in times now where there's no time for that. You got to be real. You got to be authentic. Take that mask off. Allow God to do that. I always say, get do the work from the inside out. Like get, mm -hmm. get those old mm -hmm. hurts and those old wounds. And that's what these retreats are all about. That's what the conferences are all about because God is tired of his daughters hurting. And like you said, yes. so many hurting alone. Yes. You know, alone. alone and hurting. You don't have to be alone and in pain. You do not. Alone have to. hurting and not getting healed. Because we're now. working. Come on now. We are working and we're busy. Ooh. We're like Martha. Just we're like Martha. We're busy. But some of us need to be married. Yes. We need to be married so we're down at the Lord's feet so mm. we can get healed. Because yes. we're so busy. Yes. We're here busy. We're busy taking care of everybody, everybody and hurting else. and not. That is so good. That is so true. That is so true. I think you froze up a little bit. But I'm getting, oh, you are, you are. Oh, no. Yeah, you did. I'm getting excited. Maybe, maybe I need to calm down. <laughs> that was good. You doing some good talking. <laughs> no, but I'm saying hurt, hurt people myself. hurt others. How are you going to help somebody and you hurt? And you're hurt. Because hurt people hurt people. Exactly. And then while you're hurt and broken, guess what? You're that's what you're attracting, hurt and broken Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you know, I even felt like I got some healing through, you know, through the retreat as well. So, you know, there was a lot that I got out of the retreat, but the main thing is God knew what I needed. He knew what you needed. Yes. He knew yes. what I needed because he knew what I needed. Me being obedient to come to the retreat. That's right. He fed me what I needed. Yes, yes. Praise God. I, mm, I'm so excited. He sent me what I needed. So basically, you have to, we, God is 
is also teaching us and wants us to trust him. Yes. That's he right. wants us to trust him. That's Even right. though, regardless of how it sees, and I say this often, regardless of how it sees, how it feels, or even what it may very well be. Mm. It could be a reality of where you are. That's but true. it doesn't mean that God can't fix it. He can go down to the most earth of the world. Yes. He can go down deep. That's right. And, and get you exactly where you are. Are so it's not too hard, that's right. For him, what did they used to say back in the day from the uttermost to the guttermost? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> he, it doesn't matter, he, he, he will meet you right where you are, right? He will meet you right where you are. And I think many times people think, Well, I right now and I can't do that because I'm, I'm just living like this way or I'm living that way, or you know, no. That's God. You're his daughter. He loves you. He doesn't stop loving us because we're being ratchet. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> or being Isn't a hot mess. Amazing. No. He does not stop loving you. His love is eternal. His love is everlasting and everlasting. No, and, and many times, and God is always present. He's always present. And many times people think, oh, I don't feel God's presence. But that's not, be, that's not because of God. That's because you have to get into his presence. He's there. Right, right, right. He's there, right? So, and he, we don't. And it's important that we get to know him. Got to get to oh, yeah, definitely that relationship. Got to get to know him. Got to have that up close and personal relationship. That's why sometimes, well, sometimes that's why we are short of you know what it says about knowledge. Oh, that we yeah. perish because of lack, lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. And that's right. No. Right, not knowing him, then we don't know what kind of father is because we basically evaluating him to a earthly father, and he's nothing like our earthly nothing father. Like, he's nothing His like love him. is amazing. Oh, it's amazing. nothing like God's love. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, to think about how Lucifer got kicked out mm. because of him doing his nonsense, but yet he continuously gives us. Chance after chance. No wonder Lucifer hates us. Chance because after we've taken true. his place. That's and God keeps forgiving. And God mm. keeps allowing us to have another chance. Yes. He's a loving God. He's a loving God. Yes, he is. Mm. And he is so amazing. I know he's been all of that to me. I, I refer, because somebody asked me one time, why do you call God your daddy? Because that's my daddy. That is my daddy. And when you can begin to see God as your daddy, <laughs> your life will change in a way that you would have never imagined. That is my daddy. I go to my daddy for anything and everything. Wow. I go to my daddy for everything. And that's why many times people are like, I can't believe, you know, if I go through something or something's happening in my life, how are you able to smile? How are you able to be so upbeat? It's not that I don't have bad days. I have bad days, but I know my daddy, my heavenly daddy, at the end, he's going to work this thing out for my good, whatever it is. Because he mm -hmm. showed me over and over and over again that that's what he does. He has shown, I always say, check, it, check your history. Check your God history. When I look back and check his track record, he always comes through. He always comes through, and we just have to... His track record. Mm. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm just so excited about everything he's doing in my life. I'm excited about everything he's doing in your life. And I'm excited about all the ladies that's going to show up at these retreats and be blessed. And your lives are going to be changed forever, forever. And not only that, but afterwards, you will have this sisterhood. So even if you're feeling alone and lonely, you don't have to feel that no more. Because, see, that's a tactic and a trap from the enemy to get you to yeah. a place where you're alone and feeling alone and lonely. Isolate yourself. He loves isolation. He Isolate. loves isolation. And so part of my ministry is building a sisterhood, making that connection so that, that's the thing. Um, one of the things God showed me some, a few years ago was when I went through a divorce. And I mean, I went, and I did, I went through it alone. Well, God was there. God was there. But I just felt like so many people turned their back on me. And that mm. was a tactic from the enemy. But I remember when I was going through that, the one thing that I said, I promised God, I said, you know what, Daddy, when I get through this, because I know I'm, I'm going to get through this. 
But when I get through this, I promise any woman that you put in my path, I will make sure that she, whatever she's going through, she will not have to go through that thing alone. Because I know what that feels like. I know what that feels like. And so that's a mandate for me. Any okay. sister that God puts in my path, I cannot allow my sister to be going through nothing alone. I cannot. And so, again, I just, and that's the thing God showed me. We have to be real. We have to be authentic. We have to take those masks off. We got to take that stuff off. Take it off and be real. Because first of all, we all got problems. We all got issues. That's it. <laughs> we all got yep. something going on. Yes, Lord Jesus. So we have to share <laughs> those things. And it's when you share that you, first of all, you feel so much lighter. You feel so much lighter when you share. And then, you know, to have people there that can pray for you and stand in the gap for you, that's that's what we need. Because, see, the enemy doesn't want any of that. He doesn't want any of that. He wants you to have the pity party. Oh, woe is me. I'm by myself. Don't nobody care about me. They don't care about me. And that might be true, but somebody cares about you. <laughs> somebody cares about you. <laughs> somebody cares. Don't somebody let, cares. Don't let the yes, enemy they do. That nobody cares. Right. And guess what? If God sends you in my path, not only do I care, I love you and I'm going to pray for you. I, and look, if you could hit me up, I love social media. First, I didn't even like social media. God's like, you need to get back on social media because that's exactly where your ministry is going to be on social media. So I tell people all the okay. time, uh, on social media. Okay. <laughs> but God is so good. And I know it's how you use it. It's how you use it. Social media is how you use it. That's right. Yeah, it could be like anything else, good or bad. It's That's according true. to how you use it. Because so my reason, you know, I I basically got uh, introduced to Sodia Meet so uh, <laughs> social media by a friend of mine who is a male. He's a minister from okay. the church I went to, and because he knew that I was a writer mm. and that I do plays, he right. says you need to get on social you media. Get on social media to That's promote. Where the people are. That's where everybody's on social media. Yeah. So <laughs> Look, that's the the enemy uses social media, so we got to use social media. How about that? How about that? Right? Yep. So that's how I ended up on social media. And then the next thing you know, I was meeting friends, uh, I mean, family, mm -hmm. posting, you know, pictures and stuff like that. Then I was finding people that um, I ain't seen in years like you. Long time. You know? I love so that. I love that. Because you do. You find people like, well, I haven't seen her in so long. I know, right? I love that. I love that. But like you said, it's all about how you're using it. But I want to, everything I do, I want to use it for the kingdom. That God has given us access to all this stuff for kingdom building purposes. And so that's what I use it for. So I love social media where there was a time when that was not the case. <laughs> But I just thank God for everything he's doing in my life and everything he's doing in your life. And I want to thank you for sharing your experience, your retreat experience. And for those of you who are watching, I want to see you at the next retreat. I'm going to give the dates later, but it is going to be, it's coming up. It's coming up. I'll give you the dates later. <laughs> but God bless you. And, and, and thank you so much, Linda, for sharing. And thank you for being my sister. And I love you so much, sister. Love you too, honey. You are not alone. You are not alone. <laughs> Amen. I know the enemy love telling us we no, you are not alone. I know I'm not alone. We are a sisterhood. We gotta we have to be that to each other. We have to. Yeah. Because right. we're going we're going Amen. the devil is a liar. We know he's a liar. He's the father Amen. of God. I'm gonna give him every black eye that I can. Yes, that's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much, Linda. And, and again, well, hit me up for more information about our Stay in the Frame virtual retreat. It's coming up and you don't want to miss it. God bless. And I will see you soon.